Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about some information that was kind of dug up by going through the Battlefield 1 beta game files. Now some of this stuff could be potentially viewed as spoilers. A lot of it's just pertaining to new stuff that's going to be in multiplayer gameplay. If you don't want to know about that and you want to be surprised for the launch of Battlefield 1, then you should probably stop watching this video now. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I'm getting this information from Reddit. There's been multiple basically content dumps of just game files and stats uh, that have been dug up showing off what all the multiplayer weapons are going to be, what all the multiplayer vehicles are going to be, the game modes, uh, weapon modifiers, and more. So I'm going to start getting into that now. The first and most interesting bit of information are the list of game modes that are going to be in Battlefield 1 at launch. We've got Conquest with 64 players. We've got Team Deathmatch that's going to be 24 players. We've got Breakthrough slash Operations, which is going to be 40 players. And I'll be getting into that in a second. Then we have Domination at 24 players, Possession at 24 players, Air Superiority at a whopping 64 freaking players, which sounds awesome. And there's a little bit more information on that game mode as well. And then we we have Conquest Small at 40 players and then Rush at 24 players. Now the new game mode Operations, which we now know is a 40 player game, uh, has been described on the Battlefield website already. We know it's going to span among multiple battles. The objective is for it to be an epic like ongoing battle that can last over an hour, basically, I guess, between multiple different maps or something like that. And uh, according to breaking down the stats and information about it, it seems like your outcome from one game is going to affect maybe the next game, or rather there won't be a clear winner or loser. It'll be like points based on how far you get. So I think it's going to be very similar to a rush game mode because it's described as having attackers and defenders, and you'll have to sort of capture objectives to move forward in the map. And apparently it's also going to have a sudden death reinforcement style mechanic, which again, I'm not really sure on how that works, but sounds pretty cool to me. And apparently there's also a placeholder for a video and voiceover for like a game intro or something like that. So I don't know if this will be in the tutorial section telling you how the game is played or if it'll be before each match begins. There's going to be four different operations, but if they do in fact span across multiple maps, I imagine this will probably include pretty much every map that is going to be in the game at launch. Then we have a game mode called Possession, which basically revolves around messenger pigeons, which were used a lot in World War I to get messages over trenches or from one area to another quickly. Um, and basically in this game mode, it's going to be 24 players, two teams, I believe. And then those teams are going to be fighting over messenger pigeons that maybe appear on the map somewhere. It sounds a lot like it's going to be a drop zone or similar to drop zone from Star Wars Battlefront. And basically, if you find a pigeon, you have to like capture it or write a message. And if you can do that within the allotted time period, you'll get a point for getting that pigeon or something like that. So uh, whoever has the most pigeons, at the end of the game wins. And I actually really liked Drop Zone in Star Wars Battlefront. I thought it was a big improvement over just standard team deathmatch. So if they can replicate that experience in Battlefield, I'm all for it. All right, now we have air superiority coming back. And unfortunately, this game mode in the past was always kind of gimmicky. It was never really well balanced. It was just kind of there and you could play it, but most people didn't because it wasn't really much of a game. However, the new air superiority has 64 players in it. And considering that there's no lock-on missiles this time around, that sounds like it could be absolutely insane. World War I had some huge aerial battles with potentially hundreds of aircraft engaging each other at once. So this sounds like it'll be an epic simulation of what that could have been like. Also, there's going to be an airship or a raid airship in the map, and the objective is going to be to blow up this airship. And I don't know if this is going to be one team defending the airship and the other team attacking it, or if both teams will have an airship, but it sounds more interesting than the standard air superiority game mode. And considering that tail gunners and stuff are probably going to be a big element to it now, uh, I am really, really excited to try this out because I'm loving the aerial combat so far and a game mode that's purely about aerial combat could be amazing. All right, now we also got a list of all the vehicles that are going to be in the game at launch, most of which we've actually seen already. So unfortunately, there's not going to be a huge amount of surprises there 
but there were some cool modifications to the vehicles that we've already used that were not in the beta or the alpha. One of those is the mortar land ship. So we've already seen the two different configurations on the land ship, the tank hunter and then the uh, infantry support one. Then there's going to be a third one called the mortar land ship. And this is described as being equipped with a rear mounted mortar that can fire smoke or gas shells. And it makes this version effective at long range particularly against infantry. This is pretty cool. It sounds kind of awesome to have a tank with an actual mortar system on it. Considering we haven't seen mortars yet in the game, uh, I'm very curious to see what they look like. In addition to this, we're also getting a new variant of the artillery truck. So we had the artillery truck, then we had the anti-air variant of that, and then there's the armored mortar truck. And it's described as being equipped with a versatile mortar firing many types of shells, making it very suitable for dealing with infantry from a distance. So I'm very excited to see uh, what mortar gameplay can be like. I hope it's not too overblown to the point where people are dying left and right from really, really long range mortars, but it is an interesting element to the game. And obviously World War I had a huge amount of artillery and mortar. And then there's another vehicle listed here called the Observation Balloon. And this is something that I actually predicted might be in the game based on the concept art that we saw a long time ago showing a guy in a basket below one of those observation balloons firing a rifle out of it. Now these were actually things in World War I. They not only used observation balloons to try and uh, fill up the sky, making it hard for aircraft to fly around and do bombing runs, but they also used it for spying on enemies and stuff like that. So potentially you might be able to spawn in the observation balloon and spot people from far away, but also shoot at them from out of the balloon or use a mounted machine gun maybe to fire at aircraft. It sounds kind of cool to me actually, and I can't wait to see how this plays out. Now they also listed off all the vehicle gadgets that were in the game. There was a lot of them, many of which we've already seen and know about, but there was a few that caught my eye. One of them was the grenade roof. I'm not really sure what this is. It could be a roof for maybe the open top truck that uh, gives it a little bit more armor, prevents grenades or something from landing on it. Uh, then they have the machine gun cooler, which I imagine lets you fire the machine gun more frequently between uh, overheats. Then there's the speed loader. Then there's the applique armor, which sounds like an additional armor upgrade for a vehicle. There's something called a fire mortar, which sounds kind of amazing. So I imagine that's an incendiary mortar round, which uh, is going to be terrifying if you're on the receiving end of that. Then there's also incendiary heavy machine guns. I'm not sure if we've already seen that in game. I do know that I've caught on fire from being shot before. I don't know if that was due to an incendiary heavy machine gun or a bug that was in the beta. Then there's also something called explosive darts. No idea what this is, but sounds cool to me. And I'm very curious to see what weapon or vehicle this is attached to. And then of course there's tons and tons of metal unlocks more than I care to list here or really go through, but this isn't really surprising. It's pretty much in line with past battlefield games. We also got a list of all the infantry weapons that are going to be in the game. There's a ton of pistols. If you want to check it out, I'll put some links in the video description. Someone even posted all the images of the weapons online. If you want to check out all the cool ones there, some of the notable ones that caught my attention were the Hewitt automatic rifle for support. It just looks like a really cool looking machine gun. No idea how it's going to perform or anything like that. Just a cool looking weapon. Then we also have the Howard Up pistol, which is an old school two barrel pistol. It seems like it's got two shots before you need to reload it. I imagine it's going to be powerful if it only has two shots, but it looks very cool and old school. Can't wait to try that out in game. Could be like the new Magnum or rather like the new two shot only Magnum. Now, something that was also listed out in the game files was all the different weapon skins, vehicle skins, and also weapon like finishes. Apparently there's more than one way to customize the look of your weapon. And I'll get into that now. Some of the really cool vehicle skins that were listed out there are the Red Baron that we already know about for the triplane. Then there's a custom dice skin as we can expect, you know, that's something that only the devs get. So if you see somebody with a custom dice skin in game, you'll know they're a dev. There's uh, the Black Bess land ship, which we actually saw from the trailer. So that'll be a land ship skin. And there's 65 different vehicle skins in the game. So far, at least from the game files that we've seen. Um, so that's pretty promising. And considering that these skins are much more custom rather than just generic camos that can be applied to any vehicle, I think that's going to be a much more rewarding and much cooler in game when we see them. Now, when it comes to weapon skins, there are 73 different listed weapon skins and they all have cool names. I have no idea what they look like, but I imagine they're very cool, like maybe engraved versions of the standard weapons. But one cool thing is that in addition to the weapon skins, 
They also had weapon materials. And because the materials are listed off as steel, blue steel, chrome, gold, nickel, and then they have beech, cherry, walnut, a lot of the weapons in the game are made out of wood and basically metal. So if you can change up the types of woods or the types of metals, in addition to the weapon skins, that sounds really freaking cool. And my hopes, of course, are that this is done in moderation or at least to a highlight extent. Obviously, nobody wants people to be running around with a solid gold machine gun in World War One. That would certainly break the immersion for me. But I imagine like if you change the metal to gold, it might just be like gold plating on like a revolver, like a really nice revolver, which they actually did have. So uh, that sounds pretty cool. I can't wait to see all the kinds of customization in the game, and I hope that DICE continues forward. 65 different vehicle skins and 73 weapon skins sound cool, but I'm probably going to burn through those pretty fast and then want more. So uh, DICE, get on it. Anyway, if you guys want to dig through all the lists and charts yourself, you are welcome to. I'll put some links in the video description. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.